What's up guys, Alvaro here from Particle School and in this tutorial let's see how this fan thing works on Houdini and first of all let's see what is actually a fan. So as side effects says on their website, finite element methods or fan let you simulate solid objects, that is objects with stuff inside and that's really crazy. So you get the volume, so the objects doesn't lose its volume and it actually if you rip the, the object it kind of get the stuff inside it's, just, it's not just like a shell as you can see here have a look on this example uh, it's brain spatter for from Eric Ferguson and check it out uh, then as you can see it actually rips the stuff and it have every a lot of stuff inside but you don't really have to keep ripping your stuff with fam. You can simulate other stuff like this fam warm locomotion from Sam Hancock. Uh, check it out. It's uh, it gives a initial simulation, a initial animation. It's a procedural animation of the warm, and then it simulates uh, mixing the animation and the gravity and all the dynamics. And the worm actually uh, crawls on the floor, interacting with everything on the ground. And I think that's really awesome. So let's start. So to show you how it works, I have created this little character here. I call him Purfem thing. And we'll drop him on the floor. So as you can see here in this scene, we have this Purfem thing high res and the cogs. Let's forget about it right now and let's focus on the poor fam thing. In order to make it a uh, fam, you just have to select the select your poor fam thing here or with the selection tool, select it here and click on organic tissue. It's on the solid tab. Just click here and done. It's a finite element method object. I don't know. Uh, it, it's already working, so just press the up arrow key to simulate it's falling. So let's create now a ground plane in order to make it collide with the floor. So just on, on the rigid body tab, just click on ground plane, as simple as it is. Now it's falling and it's interacting. Now, as you can see, when I created the, when I made this perfect thing a fam, a organic tissue, it lost a lot of resolution. Uh, let's have a look here on our high res one and the low res one. And that and that that happens because in this one here, in the high, high resolution one, I have it was just like the other one, a bit a bit more high res. And as you can see, we have uh, this base here, and then I added two spheres for the eyes. It's a horrible model, I know. It's very simple. And because of all those intersections we have here, it wouldn't work properly. So the way Houdini do to fix this, it creates here. Uh, check it out. Let me expand this window to show you. So here, this area, we have uh, what we, our model. And here is what Houdini added for me to create the finite element object. So it added this VDB from polygons. Let me show you here. This VDB from polygons, it, let me just hide the high res one and unhide this one. Check it out. Uh, from our new, it was like this. And then it added the VDB from polygons. And what it does, it creates a lot of voxels. Let me just connect it again. It creates a lot of voxels on our object. If you look closer, you can see here the voxels. You can control its size here too. I'm not changing it right now. And then it converted it back to polygons. And then it fused all the points and then it remeshed it to make it a uh, lower res. You can increase this resolution, decreasing this target edge length here. And then 
the most important part of the fam thing is the tetrahedralite. And that's what gives you the volume of your objects. It creates, for, for every face, it creates a tetrahedron. So it's this face now is an object and it fills the inside with another tetrahedrons. In order to see our, our volume here, I will add a clip here between the tetrahedralize and the doping part. I will activate it and I'll just change its direction here to one and this to zero. And as you can see now, you can see the interior of our character and it's filled with objects, so it's solid. Now let's shake this clip to take it off <clears throat> and delete it. And make sure you activate the doping part. And uh, something else the, that the, when you create a simulation, Hojins create this auto doping part, auto doping network, and here's where the simulation happens. So here inside of the auto doping part, I'll press Mm, L to organize it, auto dot network, not import. It have these chains here. So this chain is the base of the simulation. It have the gravity and the output. And this merge is merging the static solver network and the static solver network or hierarchy. And it's the finite element hierarchy and the static solver hierarchy. This merge will merge all the uh, simulations. If you, if you have some like RBD, it would create another one here. And here on the finite element method, it added another merge and here all your other finite element objects will be connected. The same for the ground plane, it would connect all the other static solvers. And here inside of the this, that's my proof and thing. And I can control all of its parameters here. So in this case, it's a bit too stiff in my opinion. So I'll press, just make sure your arrow here is on top of the viewport and press spacebar three to see it from the side. And I will deactivate the grid and let's press the up arrow key to simulate. So it's a bit too stiff. Uh, I wouldn't, I don't know. Okay, my floor is rotated. Let me see, where is it? Let me change it to zero, zero, zero. Fine. Sometimes I rotate things, I don't know how, but it happens. So here inside of the auto dot network, let's get back to our proof and thing and simulate it. So as you can see, it's too stiff, but it's kind of a soft body as you can see here, but let's make it very, very soft. So you have the shape stiffness that controls the kind of a shell of of the of the finite element object and the volume is volume stiffness that controls the volume of it all the inside tetrahedrons so let's decrease this shape to something like dot zero zero one and the volume to the same let's place the up arrow key to simulate okay it's too stiff too stiff let's add one more zero here and one more zero here. See how it looks like. Starts looking better. I will just add one more zero here. You can keep playing like this. And yeah, now it looks fine. Let me just show you something else. I will decrease this volume a bit more so it's too low. And here on collisions, it's not actually, let me increase this, try to increase it one more just to see how it goes. Yeah, as you can see here on the eye, you have some self intersections happening on this area here. And to fix this, you just have to go to its collisions tab and enable the collide with self. 
now it will collide with itself. Cool. Let's get back to our model and let's keep this like this. Okay, yeah, it looks fine. And to make the, I'll press uh, the, in fact, I'll keep like this. To make this scene a bit more interesting, I will go up a level here, pressing the U key. Now I'm at scene level and I will enable my cogs. These cogs are not objects yet, it's, so it will not interact with, my, with our poor thing. So in order to make it a solid object, you just have to go to the solids tab here and make it a rigid collider. No, in fact, it's not a rigid collider. The rigid collider is only if your object is static, like if those cogs weren't animated. And if it's animated, you have to use the deforming collider. So just make sure you select your cogs and click here on the form collider. Now it should work. No, try it again. Yeah. As you can see, our resolution is too low right now. So let's increase it a little bit. So I'll go to our poor fam thing here. And on, on the remesh, I will decrease this size to something like 0 0.8 maybe. Mm, a bit less. 0 0.7. 0.65 should work fine. Now let's simulate it one more time. And it starts looking much better. So I'll go to our outdop network, press L to organize it. One, th one cool thing about Hojin is that you can keep working as soon. Uh, while you're simulating things, you can even change the parameters, what I'm not, I'm not going to do right now. It's look much better with this resolution. And see how fast it goes back to its original shape. That's happening because of this dumping ratio. If you keep it in zero, it will get a bit wobbly, but it will come back really fast to its original shape. In 0 0.5, it's a bit slower, but it's fine. Uh, usually, people work from values from between zero and one, as all the help file says. But let's work with a five value so you can see actually what's happening. Like, oh my God, what a poor thing. Look how ugly it looks right now, <laughs> like this. But it eventually will get back to its original shape. And I have never made a proper test about this, but I did some tests with 50 of damping and it uh, takes v uh, much longer to get back to its original shape. I'm not doing it right now because it takes too long to simulate you. And it, you can work like m with m uh, metal properties if you want just to, it can bend and it will never get to its original position. You can just keep increasing this <laughs> damping ratio, not too much, I think it's something like 50, but then I'll get back to our five. In fact, I'll keep it in one. And, but then don't forget to here on the auto dot network, you just have to increase the sub steps. This will increase the accuracy of your simulation. And every time you notice some interpolation or weird things happening, you just have to increase this sub steps. Mm. Usually you don't have to increase it too much, but sometimes you have like crazy values around 100. But for our first test, I always keep like put on three and see if it fix and then five. In this case, in one with one, it's working just fine. So let me show you now how to uh, link it with our high res resolution object, this one. So what you have to do is use this tool here. 
embed high-res object. And as everything is quite simple, you just have to click here on proof and thing, on the high-res one, and then click on the embed high-res. And I think it's done. Now you just have to select the other one, the low-res one, and put your cursor on the viewport and press enter. In fact, I had to press enter on that one too, so we have an error right now. So, uh, click here on the embed high res, select your proof and thing. Now, just make sure you put your error here, otherwise it will go inside your object and you don't want it, so just put your error here and press enter. Now, it will uh, give you another message saying that you have to select your low res one, the simulation one, and put your error here and press enter. Now it's done. So it will automatically hide your low res one and keep only the high res one here. So let's simulate it. I'll fast forward it again. So yeah, that's cool. Let me just show you the simulation with the high res. Much better. I'll decrease my timeline here to something like 168. And I'll deactivate this key here. Oh my God, it shouldn't be activated. And let me just show you one more thing that I forgot. Uh, here inside your, nope, in fact, it's inside the Autodop network on your object. You have these on the collisions, you can control the friction of your object with zero. It can get very sleeky. I'm not sure about this word right now, but you have also this initial state tab here where you can put some initial velocity. So let's like put a five initial velocity on the, on this axis, the Y one. And as you can see, it just add initial velocity. So it goes upwards and then it starts falling. You can add angular velocity. This way your object uh, keeps spinning a bit. And yeah, that's it. In the next tutorial, I'll show you how to actually break things with fam, just like the donuts example. So that's it guys, don't forget to uh, like the video and follow us on Vimeo or subscribe to our YouTube account and even like our Facebook page. This way you really, really, really support us. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.